Another progressive senator's name in the mix, Ohio's Sherrod Brown, who, unlike Elizabeth Warren, endorsed Clinton and did so last year, campaigning alongside her in Ohio, a swing state where some polls show Trump leading. Senator Brown joins me now live from Cleveland, Ohio. Senator, thanks for joining us. Jake, good to be back. Thanks. So Hillary Clinton is making a big issue out of Donald Trump's failure to release his tax returns. Take a listen. Now, what about his tax plan? I hope you'll keep asking that. And what about his taxes? Because when you run for president, especially when you become the nominee, that is kind of expected. So you got to ask yourself, why does he want to release him? Now, it is true that Bill and Hillary Clinton have made their tax returns public dating back to 1977. But, but, Senator Brown, given that Hillary Clinton has refused to release the transcripts of those paid speeches to Goldman Sachs and that she had to essentially be dragged into giving her emails to the State Department, isn't Hillary Clinton a flawed messenger when it comes to transparency? No, I, I think they're very different issues. I, you know, you, you see what Donald Trump refuses to do, and I, I listened to your prior interview, and uh, there's a lot of dancing there, and I don't, I don't know why Trump doesn't want to release his returns. He clearly doesn't want to. Um, every presidential candidate in both parties, I think you said since Nixon, uh, an interesting comparison. But I, is it Trump doesn't want to acknowledge, I, is it, is it uh, that he doesn't do much charitable giving? Is it he doesn't want people to know his real net worth? Is it some of his investments? I mean, you had, you had Trump on the show, I believe a couple of months ago, Jake, where you, you wore one of his ties made in China. Uh, I would add that I'm sitting in a, I, I'm in Cleveland today, and it's unfortunately snowy Cleveland. I'm wearing a suit uh, made by union workers about five miles from here. Uh, and that plant so hires several hundred Americans. And when I hear Donald Trump talk about making America great again, and then makes a lot of money apparently by outsourcing jobs to China, and then he talks a good game on trade policy, it just makes me question a whole lot of things. And I think his um, tax returns um, would indicate a lot if he ever releases them. Of course, he doesn't have to with all the media pressure, but I, I think it shows some issues that people will think about. Uh, just for the record, I wore that Trump tie to make that point that the trial. No, I know made. you did. No, <laughs> just for the viewer. But let's talk about trade, Senator, because because it's sure. an issue where Donald Trump seems to be actually trying to run to the left of Hillary Clinton. Take a look at one of your re-election campaign ads from 2012. Sure. Senator Sherrod Brown is calling for action against cheating China. They don't play fair, and we've got to fight back. Cheating China, fighting back. Later on in the ad, it talks about tariffs, imposing tariffs on China. To be frank, that sounds a lot more like Donald Trump than it does Hillary Clinton. How are you going to be able to convince your voters, your working class voters in Ohio, to vote for her when they seem to agree more with you and him on the issue of trade? Well, I, I wouldn't characterize my position as close to Donald Trump's. I, he is hi highly critical of China. He talks about big tariffs. Doesn't go any deeper than that. His, his, um, his analysis or his solutions, and again, look what he does with his own businesses um, and with his own outsourcing of jobs. But the, the real issue is I trust Hillary Clinton on trade manufacturing because I see her plan. Uh, she wants a trade prosecutor to enforce rules and trade laws. Um, she wants uh, to uh, triple the enforcement budgets at the Department of Commerce and the International Trade Commission. She has specific reasons about her opposition to Trans-Pacific Partnership, currency, lack of currency provisions, rules of origin, which is really important in, in this region of the country with autos. Um, she has um, been up and she, and she clearly on manufacturing she has a real an in-depth plan about how to bring manufacturing to this country trump has words but there's not really any depth there and that's why i trust hillary to do this right well senator uh, in-depth plans are, are are all fine and good but as i'm i don't need to tell you when you go out there and talk to working class men and women in ohio people who think that the deck has been stacked against them by the washington elite democrats or republicans selling their jobs down the river, whether they're going to Mexico or China, a lot of them seem to be very skeptical of Hillary Clinton and willing to listen to Donald Trump. Are you not concerned about that? Oh, of course I'm always concerned in election. I mean, I, it's, um, it, it, I'm just, I'm greatly concerned that Donald Trump will be the nominee of a major political party in this country, and anything can happen in an election, but I also know that that Secretary Clinton um, will, will work on these trade enforcement issues 
in a way that and, and will oppose these trade agreements in understanding how to do that, which Donald Trump has never really offered. I also know that when you talk to working class audiences in Ohio, when they start thinking about this in the next four months, uh, Donald Trump has been against the minimum wage. Now he's kind of all over the place, but he's, he's fundamentally against, he said wages are too high, so he clearly has been against the minimum wage. He might act like he changed his position. He's up against prevailing wage, which will, which will be attacked right at the heart of the building trades, the people that, that, build, that build our roads and, and construct our buildings. Um, he's for right to work, which is a, a, a dagger in the heart of working class Ohioans. So I think when they see the big picture on jobs and the big picture on manufacturing and the big picture on trade, they're going to see a few sort of shallow words from Trump but they're going to see a lifelong commitment um, to workers from Hillary Clinton. And that's why I trust her to do this right. That's why I endorsed her early. That's why I campaigned hard with her, particularly in the industrial manufacturing unionized parts of Ohio mm -hmm. in the Northeast. And that's where she's going to run her margins up and win this state. The Wall Street Journal reported this week that Bill Clinton, the former president, used his nonprofit Clinton Global Initiative to steer a $2 million commitment of private funds to a for-profit green energy company partially owned by friends of the Clintons. According to the journal, details about the investment were initially removed from the CGI website a few months later, partly, quote, to avoid calling attention to Mr. Clinton's friendship with one of his friends, Julie Tauber McMahon, who owns a 29% stake in the company. What do you say to those who see this report and say, boy, this looks an awful lot like crony capitalism? Well, I don't, I don't know the details of the report. I've not read it. I take the Wall Street Journal. I, I'm married to a journalist, as you know, Jake, and I, I understand the difference between reporters at the Wall Street Journal, who are some of the best in the land, and their editors. And I, I think that you're going to see coming out of the Wall Street Journal a uh, crescendo of attacks on, on Clinton. Uh, in ways that are that are generally unfair. I, I don't know enough about this report. I do know, though, that the Wall Street Journal probably won't be writing much about the good things the Clinton Global Initiative has done to combat international poverty. And uh, I, I've worked on a lot of those issues. I've not really worked with the Global Initiative, but I've worked with people like Jim Yong Kim, Kim at the World Bank uh, and others in, in combating international tuberculosis and other issues. I welcome the work that the Clinton Global Initiative has done with groups groups and individuals like Bono and all that's happened mm -hmm. um, around the world. And so I, I, I think that if, if that's going to be the Republican attack on Hillary, um, it's not going to work. Well, there are going to be a lot of them, I bet, but let's move on. The latest uh, Q poll has Trump beating Hillary Clinton by four points in your home state of Ohio, 43 percent to 39 percent. One thing that's been talked about as a result of this, in part, is putting you on the ticket. Also, you have progressive credentials that might help her shore up uh, some of those Sanders supporters. Now, you've said you're not interested in the VP job. But obviously, Senator, if Clinton came to you and said, I really need you to be my vice president, you wouldn't say no, would you? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm married to a journalist, and I, as I said, Jake, and as you know, and she, um, we, we know you have to ask that question. I'm not going to answer it any differently. Um, I respect the work you do. I'm not going to answer any differently. I love the job I'm doing. My priorities are to continue to fight for manufacturing in my state and for jobs and health care and deal with lead issues in my beloved city of Cleveland where I live and every other city in the, mid, in the industrial Midwest. I will put real effort into helping elect Hillary Clinton. I, I, as I said, I love this job and, and that's I'm just not going to give you a different answer. So I, I, would just trying, say, I would just say it's not Sherman-esque, but I appreciate it. That's I, not Sherman. I understand. I understand that. Okay, not, right. not a Sherman-esque denial. <laughs> Senator Sherrod Brown, thank you so much. Say hi to your wife for us. We Good appreciate to be back. It. Thanks.